we invite you to listen to the radio play entitled Ossolinsky's Entry into Rome. In the 16th and 17th centuries, the election of a new pope was connected with sending messengers to Rome. They were sent by the rulers of Catholic countries from all over Europe, including the kings of France, Spain and Portugal. Among them, there were also rulers of Poland. The most remarkable entry of the Polish mission took place on the 27th of November 1633. It shook the inhabitants of Rome. It reminded in their memory for many years. It was captured in many paintings and engravings. It stirred the imagination of writers. It also became our inspiration. We will tell you about it from the perspective of a radio broadcast, which will have certainly taken place in many European radios if Guglielmo Marconi or Nikola Tesla had been born several centuries earlier. Can we hear each other? Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Rai Radio. Good morning. You are welcomed by Giulia Rossi and Romeo Romano. Together with us are colleagues from the Polish radio Anna Wisniewska. Good morning. And Jan Kowalski. Morning. From Radio Portugal, Ines Silva. Good morning. And Francesco Costa. Good morning. You can also listen to our report in English in other European countries. Ines and Francisco are from the western antipodes of the continent and from the distant and already called Northeast. Ilsa Vituola, Edgar Gulbis will report for Latvian radio. Good, Good morning. morning! We invite you to listen to our report, which will centrally be extraordinary. No other delegation has had such publicity so far. It's true, the news of today's event is in test with incredible rumors. There is a grain of truth in every rumor. Perhaps I took some of them in that fin commission of session. This morning, on the way to the studio, I say a colorful retani, shining in the morning sun. Splendor, this eternal splendor, a little funny, a little devoid of taste. I think you are exaggerating. These costumes are so different from ours, which makes them beautiful. Maybe you're right. They will certainly impress the Romans. This unfeigned splendor pleases your countrymen. It was begun. Sake through the gates of Ternal City towards Sant'Angelo's castle. The head of the return of 2,000 people is working toward us, according to our reports. At the head, we can see two readers dressed in the scarlet traditional costumes of the Polish nobility. Bain them, as I can correctly, 22 cars covered with red cloth, apparently expins with the coat of arms of Polish nobility. And here is the full exoticism. Ten camels covered with red stain, or they have silver ribbons in their mane. They are led by Tatars and Armenians, dressed in long coats, glittering with silver and gold striats. I have seen such at court in Moscow. This fashion came from the Tatars. You are definitely right. You know fashion very well. Dear Lise, we give the floor to our Portuguese colleagues. Thank you very much, Francisco. Have you ever seen anything like it? I've been to many cold. I've seen coronations. So far, everything is normal. <laughs> you are hard to surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, do you hear these horses? That's about 30 Cossacks with handgun in beautiful red and gold outfits. Straight from the boundless fields of Ukraine. The Republic of Poland is a huge country in Europe terms, but let us not forget our overseas heritage. We are the sailors. And they are riders. Even Russians say about them, a pole without a horse is like a body without a soul. More riders, but they are not longer Cossacks. You ride is a troop of papal cavalry which always accompanies the entrance of messengers. 
Behind them, you heard the trumpets. Papo peacemakers on mules. Which of the peacemakers holds the hat of his cardinal? Oh, what a colors! At the hat, like an angel on a horseback, there is a man dressed in white robes with wings of feathers, followed by a bull retinue. The deputies valors, who coats with orange lining, all in soldiers' uniform. Unbelievable! Ladies and gentlemen, the servants lead five horses whose seats are studded with precious time stones. The saddle of the first is seated with diamonds, the second with turquoise, the third with rubies, the fourth with various expensive stones, while the fifth, extremely beautiful, it sparkles with diamonds and something I don't recognize. It's a pity, you can't see that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is unbelievable. Simply incredible. The horses are losing their gold horseshoes. The crowns go wide. You seem surprised too, and I thought anything could amaze you. And yet, this is something I have not seen anywhere in the world. There is so much going on. However, that we must leave my emotions without comment. Ladies and gentlemen, the retinue of Courti is passing in front of us, among whom I recognize the Courti of the Spanish deputy, but also some of our countrymen. I recognize them. The retinue is closed by the courtier of Ozolinsky deputy on Turkish horse. At the head of a rider, dressing in the coat of lynxes, with a silver make in his hair. Incredible splendor, from the beginning of the retinue probably to the very end. We must say goodbye to you and give the floor to our colleagues from Latvia. Hello, hello, can you hear us? Edgar? Elsa? We can hear. We give you the floor, Latvians. Thank you. Edgar, it is a remarkable day. Can you see this delighted crowd? The wealth, the splendor. It's impressive to the inhabitants of Rome. I think not on everyone. Some see in the show as a bad display of taste. I've heard such voices in the crowd. Well, the gusti was known as the spontandum. Yes. Dear ladies and gentlemen, the retinue we see now consists of the most distinguished families from all over Europe. Not only the inhabitants of the Republic of Poland who constitute the majority, but also the French, Germans, Spanish and Portuguese. Magnificent horses, splendid costumes, characteristic of their riders, carrying the splendor of their families, they ride through the streets of Rome. I don't think Rome has seen a show like this since the day of the emperors. Maybe it's an exaggeration, but I don't think it's a big one. There's another commotion. The golden harness of one of the horses has broken. The uh, locals just can't get over it. Those saddles with precision stones, extremely rich clothes. And here is the main character, Jerzy Osolinski, in the middle of the retinue, on a horse with a ruby harness, a saber with diamonds and rubies at his sight. Looks extremely dignified. It carries the majesty of the Polish king, who in these days goes to relieve the besieged Smolensk. The Swiss guard next to the deputy, behind bishops and prelates, and behind them, a carriage drawn by five horses. I heard they were given by the king of Poland. You can hear the shots from St. Angelo's castle. Trinita dei Monti. It is the square where the solemn march is going to end. Did it stun the Romans? I think it did. It was great. And those golden horseshoes almost caused disorders here. Well, the entering is truly royal. Our listeners in Latvia have something to be jealous of. Yes, not only the weather, the atmosphere of the eternal city, but also the amazing spectacle. And what do our Polish colleagues think about it? Do you hear us? We hear. 
Yes, we are listening to you with curiosity. Not only you, but of course all of the colleagues broadcasting this event. It's very interesting for us how you perceive our countryman who decided to dance the room. We got to know a little bit about the intentions of Chancellor Ossolinsky at the head of the Polish delegation. Our delegation showed our diversity from Poles, Lithuanians, through Zaporozhian Cossacks, Armenians and Tatars, the bulwark of the West, fighting against Russia and Turkey. Proud, true sometimes I felt they are too self-important. We'll ask our radio colleagues about it. We have to stop now, because we are about to hear a speech by Jerzy Osolinski. The Polish people's zeal for faith is in it. I admit their extravagant generosity in erecting church buildings. I'll also keep silent about the fact that worship is most fervent there. The greatness of this nation is shown in the fact that for so many centuries they have kept their guard against the savage and cruel enemies of the Christian name. The Ottoman Crescents, which destroyed so many mighty armies, are stopped by the Poles with their bare breasts. The Tatar acrimony, which has not yet spread all over Europe, is restrained by one Republic of Poland. The Muscovites, Christians in name only, but in themselves and in customs inferior to the rest of the barbarians. We have conquered so many times, we have oppressed, and finally we have turned the most beautiful part of their countries into our province. Jerzy Osolinski and his entry are sometimes evaluated in different ways. Some claim that he was an excellent deputy, having achieved all the goals set for him by the Polish king Władysław IV. He was helped by the knowledge he gained while studying in Paris, Orleans, Padua, Rome, Bologna, Naples and England. He was fluent in many languages, including Latin. His speech in that language during an audience with Pope Urban VIII made a great impression. The Pope compared his pronunciation to that of Circero. He was honored with the title of Prince of the Holy Roman Empire. Others claim that this meeting of the Sarmatian from the West was an incorruptible show of great wealth combined with pride. Certainly it was an extraordinary event. This radio play was made as part of the Erasmus Plus project on a school stage, another version of education, by the student from Istituto Comprensivo Sandro Penna, Batipalia, Italy, Agrupamento de Escola de Amarleja, Portugal, Malspils Vidu Latvia, Primary School Number 10 in Ternobrzeg, Poland. <laughs>